Welcome to Whack All Access. My name is Rachel Vigil. Last week, women's soccer started up, but now it's the guys' turn. Men's soccer returns to the Whack Digital Network this weekend. And our preseason poll came out, and Seattle U was picked first on the men's side, and we're now joined by their head coach, Pete Fewing. Coach, I feel like I just saw you out in Seattle, but it's been a couple months now. How was the offseason for you? Uh, the offseason is good. Busy, right? We're always recruiting and uh getting ready for the next year, camps in the summertime, some sounder stuff. So uh, busy off season, but fun. We're, we're enjoying it. It's can't wait to get started on Friday night. And what were you doing with the sounders? That's my other, that's my night job. Ah. Yeah, I do their broadcast. So uh, I do the radio and every once in a while TV. All right. So you're occasionally on this side of the interview then, huh? Yeah, yeah it's fun. I love it. I, it's a great vacation. Head coach and I play together with good friends. And so uh, I'll travel with them three or four or five times a year. And then uh, when they're on the road, oftentimes they're just in studio. But it's good. This is the time of the year. I've got one, I think, two games left that I'll do, but I'll miss probably seven, uh, five of the, ne of the next seven games. So right. it's fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Chill, you and I have good gigs. <laughs> yes, this is a great job. We can never complain. But now let's jump to your Seattle U team real quick. Declan McGlynn, youngest player that made the preseason all-conference team for your guys' team. So tell me, what did you like from him this offseason? He's uh, growing up. You know, typical of any freshman, they get uh, – it takes a little time to get used to it, to the level, uh, to the physicality of college soccer. I think this, this last spring – uh, especially our game against Oregon State, he realized he's a bit of a marked man, a bit of a target. So people are going to go after him a little bit more, a little more physical. So he's had to get rid of the ball quicker, uh, which is good. And then when he's in situations where he can isolate people one-on-one -on -one with, with a little bit of room, he's, he's doing a better job picking and choosing. And then physically he's stronger, which is good. I, and I, it's really fun to see, you know, from – fall quarter to spring quarter grades got better uh, understands training a little bit better and his father was the misl number one draft pick he and i his father and i were teammates uh so he comes from a family of his dad won a national championship at spu gerard mcglynn um and declan was the key guy for the crossfire academy team and uh and so he, he got the ball a lot it's a little bit different here um I expect both he and Noe to be really, uh, Noe Mesa to be really important factors in scoring goals this year. I know you lost a couple guys both to the MLS, which is always great. Graduation too. How do you replace guys like Nathan Ani and Sergio Rivas? You don't. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. Uh, you just, well, we, but there's a pipeline always coming, right? So, uh, you know, this young man, Jesse Ortiz from uh, the Houston Dynamo, has some similarities to Sergio Rivas. He's really good on the ball. He's crafty. He's got very good vision. He can score as well as set things up. Uh, and then we reload. Our associate head coach, Nate Dalicon, does a great job on finding more talent. Uh, Nathan Ani, big center back, 6'5", uh, is, is quite a handful. But we have three or four Halbor from – uh, Norway has come in and Nkosi has transferred from um, UConn and uh, Richards transferred in from Maryland. So we've we just had to, you know, reload a little bit. But those guys, the leadership of Sergio and uh, Nathan Ani is really going to be missed. No question. They're fun. They're great guys to have around. So we stay in touch, but we miss them quite a bit. Will they be making any trips back out to come support you guys? I'm sure they will. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Their season, uh, they've got another month or so left in Reno. They're with the Reno side. Their, their USL affiliate uh, has been doing really well. So I think they were number two in the league last time I looked last week. So I expect them to have an, a bit of an extended season. And then Nathan's from this area. Sergio's from New Mexico. So once his off season comes around, I'm sure we'll see more of Nathan. Well, we're really happy to see them both doing so well, too. And, you know, we're always looking for new names to kind of pay attention to. Who do you think will have a standout season? Uh, I like our captain a lot. He does the, the yeoman's work that you don't always see, right? Ozzy Alonso had a 10 years with the Seattle Sounders, and um, you missed him all, quite a bit when uh, he left the squad. Uh, Julian Avila Good is, is very similar in that, in that way in that he clogs up the middle quite a bit. Uh, I think Hal Uteritz is going to have another good year. He, was, he got five goals last year as a freshman. Noe Mesa uh, is a junior. We redshirted him. I'm really excited. He has two years left. I think he's going to have an excellent year. And same with Declan. So, and, and Jesse Ortiz, like I said, he's a very 
a good crafty player. I like our goalkeepers. We have four. Uh, we have two that are probably battling for the starting spot right now uh, in um, uh, Akili and, and uh, Zach. So um, Zach Nelson. So I, it'll, it'll be interesting. I think we're good. I think, I, I think, but we have a lot of unknowns right now because it's a very new team, especially right down the spine. It sounds like you got some decisions to make before Friday night's game, huh? We do. Yes, we do. That's fun. That's the fun part of it. I mean, how do you make a decision like that, Coach? Is it kind of game day you see who does well in warm-up? Or how do you – I mean, you said two guys are kind of in it for a tie right now. Well, so today is Wednesday. So we've, we will be playing quite a bit the next couple of days, uh, seven on seven, nine on nine, that kind of thing. Uh, and so we have a certain idea of some positions, right? But – but we'll see how they do over the next couple of days. It was sharp. Um, and, and the way our season goes, you know, it's pretty much two games a week, except for two weekends uh, during the WAC. So we're going to need a lot of guys to, you know, we depth's going to be very important. But it's what they do. You know, it's what they've been doing. Uh, and then today and tomorrow will be really important for them as well. And you guys are 7-2 and two at Championship Field. You're playing at home. Does it kind of take any pressure off knowing that Friday night you guys will be at home? We like being at home. We, I would love our field. I've uh, been here a long time. That used to be a parking lot. It used to be full of rubble. It's contaminated soil, uh, and it's growing and getting better each each year. We add little things to it that make it a little bit more enjoyable. And honestly, the skyscrapers, Rachel, are making a better bat drop for us. So there's one that just popped up a couple of weeks ago. Um, so playing at home has been a big thing for us. I think we had a 21 game home unbeaten streak at one point, uh, which was leading the country. I think Washington took that away from us. And um, and so, uh, yeah, we like being at home. We don't take it for granted, though. And, but it, it's great you just said that because I have to remind the guys of that today, and I will. Yeah, I mean, I remember seeing those skyscrapers when we were out there for the WAC tournament, and it is beautiful out there. And I know you also mentioned Washington in there taking away that uh, win streak, but you're also playing them this upcoming non-conference season. You also got, like, Indiana, Notre Dame. What are you kind of hoping to accomplish with this non-conference schedule? Uh, honestly, just get better. It's it's. I'm really proud of our schedule. So we, you know, San Francisco, Denver, then off to Notre Dame, Indiana, then back for Portland. We have a, a cup called the a Cafe Darte Coffee Cup. Uh, one of my old teammates, Jeff Stock, owns the company. And uh, Washington in football, college football, Wazoo, and the University of Washington have the Apple Cup. We have the coffee cup. So uh, then, and then we have uh, the UW game on the fifteenth, right? At, so we play Thursday against Portland, then Washington on the Sunday, and that's the Washington Athletic Club one hundred one cup. And that's the this will be the fourth year they won the first two. Uh, everybody who was MVP in that league has gone on to be drafted in the MLS. Uh, so um, uh, it, it's it's that's a lot of fun that that schedule. And then we're back. We're down to. California, and we've got we're at UC Santa Barbara, and then Cal Poly. In that, there's eight in our schedule, including Oregon State, which was exhibition last week. We have eight teams that went to the NCAA tournament, and in that, there's 15 national championships. Uh, San Francisco has five, Indiana eight, Santa Barbara has one, Notre Dame has one. So, doing the math, there's a lot of success and, and rich history in our schedule. So, we're excited about it. Really, the the trip to Notre Dame is kind of a bucket list trip i wish bobby clark was still there but he's retired and and uh well deserved but uh it's just to make us better and you know you hopefully want to replicate what the wax season is going to look like and then what postseason is going to look like i think we have that in this schedule awesome coach and 26 years at seattle u you got your 300th win last year i remember being at that game i was able to be there but what do you tell younger coach with so much wisdom that you have <laughs> I'm not sure I have that wish. <laughs> uh, the advice I got, I have a letter on my left uh, from Bruce Rioch, who I played for in 1986. Uh, then he went back to England. He actually coached Arsenal the year before Arsene Wenger took over. And he said, uh, be firm but fair. Act out of reason and not impulse. I don't always do that. But uh, be firm but fair. Act out of reason and not impulse. Learn as much as you can about the game. And then be yourself. Um, we like to have fun. You can't fake it with the players. They'll know. Uh, so, and, and treat your players well. Be honest with them. You know, I just read a great book with Greg Popovich, and they just said, hey, he does two things. He tells them the truth, 
and then uh, he loves them. And I think that uh, principles, you know, techniques and tactics will change. Principles don't change. So hard work, honesty, integrity, uh, commitment, all those things. And and so for the young co- – and I find myself – it's odd. I find – you know, we just played against Terry Boss. Uh, I met Terry in 2009. He was the backup goalkeeper for Casey Keller with the Sounders. He's with the Sounders three or four years. He's had a good run in the coaching ranks to get to Oregon State. Uh, and he and I have some of those talks and uh, about just how you do how you do things really important. So and how you build your program. And um, it's funny. I do have some experience now, and I learn a lot watching other coaches, uh, reading about other coaches. Again, to my left, there's a bunch of books on Pep Guardiola uh, or uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. Uh, and I, I think it's fascinating to hear how guys do it, and they all it's, it comes down to principles, right? If you take care of your players and you do the right thing, good things will happen. That's so true. I believe good karma always. Yeah, I, yeah. Soccer gods. Small <laughs> G. It's a small G. It's not a big G. It's a small G. But yeah, you do things right off the field, it transfers on the field. If you have high expectations off the field, you'll have high expectations on the field. Well, Coach, I hope you've set your expectations extremely high, as I'm sure you do. And we're wishing you the best this season. Thanks a lot, Rachel. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Yeah, yeah we, we appreciate, appreciate you coming, coming on with us today. today. Yes, anytime. Awesome. And I'll send you something from the back wall. That's a bunch of crap. My wife won't <laughs> let me have it all. You know what? There is a ton. I'm sure there is so much cool things behind you. Like there's so many soccer balls. You said plaques. I think you got to keep it all, really. Yeah, it's pretty random, but it is. Uh, everything has a meaning. There's a lot of stuff from uh, uh, alumni's families, and uh, yeah, there's some pretty random things in there, but it's fun. There's a lot of memories, and I'm sure one day you'll be able to look back on all of them, and it'll be just a great time. Yep, I agree. I agree. Thank you. All righty, Coach. Well, I will let you go. We appreciate your time again. You bet, Rachel. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Enjoy the season. Thank you. All right, Pete Fewing, Seattle U's head coach for men's soccer. For Wackle Access, I'm Rachel Vigil.